Martin, Cataract and Comprehensive Ophthalmology Department, who will delve into the topic of glaucoma, the silent thief of sight. Dr. Fu, please. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to share a little bit about the glaucoma. My name is uh, Dr. Fu, and I am um, currently an associate consultant in the glaucoma department of Singapore National Eye Centre. I will be sharing with everyone a little bit about glaucoma, which is the silent blinding disease. So before we talk about glaucoma, we have to know how does the eye work? So the eye basically has many, uh, many different components which allow a person to see well. This includes the cornea, which is the front transparent layer of the eye, a lens, which, is, uh, which will eventually become a cataract, like what Dr. Wong has described in her talk earlier, the retina at the back of the eye, at which light focuses on, as well as the optic nerve, which sends um, these images from the retina to the brain. So the eye is likened like a camera with various parts that actually focus light onto the photosensitive surface of the film. And the optic nerve, which is what we're worried about in glaucoma, is like this USB cable that connects the camera to the computer. Our eye itself has a pressure within that is produced by the ciliary body. The ciliary bo body produces um, this fluid called the aqueous humor that actually maintains the pressure within the eye so that the eye does not deflate. The eyeball is essentially like a balloon with fluid inside that keeps it distended. So this intraocular pressure that is within the eye is actually created by the balance between a production of fluid as well as a drainage of fluid out of the eye. Within the eye itself, there is a structure called the trabecular meshwork, which allows for fluid to flow out of the eye and to reduce the pressure. Fluid is actually produced in the ciliary body and it passes by the lens, the pupil, and then it comes out through the trabecular meshwork. So when there is a imbalance between the production as well as the drainage in the eye, the eye pressure can actually be high and this can eventually lead to glaucoma. The damage that happens within the eye occurs at the part of the eye which is called the optic nerve. And due to the abnormal pressure inside the eye, this pressure actually presses on the nerve and causes irreversible damage in the form of visual loss. So in a patient, normally, um, if you look at this graph, on the left side, it is at the time of birth till the time of death, there is a reduction in your vision. However, this reduction in vision is gradual and in a normal patient will not lead to any forms of visual impairment. However, in a patient with glaucoma, there is a reduction of vision that is faster than what is in a normal patient. And in slow progresses, over maybe many, many, many years, even without treatment, there may be no damage. There may be no, um, there may be no damage that can be perceived by the patient as there's no form of functional impairment. However, in other glaucomatous patients, there may be some form of functional impairment in their lifetime. In the rapid progressors, they may end up losing vision severely and lead to blindness even before they pass on. So the aim of treatment for glaucoma is to slow down the progression with known treatment so that a patient does not experience severe functional impairment in their lifetime. What are the risk factors for glaucoma? So there are some modifiable as well as non-modifiable risk factors which we often speak about. In a patient, the non-modifiable risk factors include age, genetic factors, as well as the shape of the eye. The older you are, the higher your risk of glaucoma. In Singapore, the prevalence of glaucoma is about 3% in, in, in persons aged 50 and above. Secondly, in terms of genetic factors, if you have a family history of glaucoma, if your first degree relative, either your parents or your siblings have glaucoma, the risk of glaucoma is also higher than the rest of the population. Thirdly, the shape of your eye. So we know that angle closure glaucoma is due to the eyeball being too short. And this leads to the angle, which is the trabecular measure of the eye, being closed up and reducing the amount of outflow out of the eye. As such, in these patients, pressure can go up and it can cause eye pain, redness, nausea, vomiting, and acute angle closure glaucoma. 
In terms of the modifiable risk factors, Long-term steroid use, either in the form of oral steroids or with eye drops, can also lead to glaucoma. If you had severe trauma to the eye, it can also lead to glaucoma. Other diseases which are associated with glaucoma, in end-stage diabetes, with severe diabetes, you can actually get what we call neovascular glaucoma, which is um, due to abnormal proliferation of blood vessels within the eye. Also, other conditions such as uveitic glaucoma are seen in patients with um, uveitis and inflammation within the eye as well. So when we talk about open versus closed angle glaucoma, majority of our patients do have an open angle glaucoma, which means that the trabecular meshwork on the left, as you can see, is open and allows a fluid to flow out of the eye. However, there is still an imbalance between the production and the outflow leading to glaucoma. In closed angle glaucoma, which is on the right side, you will see that the angle is actually closed and the trabecular meshwork is blocked. This prevents fluid from flowing out of the eye, causing a back damping of the pressure and an increase in the intraocular pressure within the eye. As such, as mentioned previously, patients would present with sudden eye redness, pain, blurring of vision, as well as seeing halos and headache, nausea and vomiting. So this is an emergency, and in patients with such symptoms, they will need to come to the accident and emergency department immediately to see an ophthalmologist. In such cases, we will perform a laser peripheral iridotomy, which is a laser procedure that allows for um, an alternative passage of fluid, bypassing the iris and the pupil, through this new little hole that we've created in the iris, so as to open up the trabecular meshwork and to relieve the pupil block. So this will allow for the pressure to be relieved and the patient will feel symptomatically better and the intraocular pressures will also come down. As you can see over here, this is an, angle, an anterior segment optical coherence tomography, which is a cross-section image of the eye. Before the laser procedure, the angle is narrow with the cornea in front and the iris actually forming a very acute angle. After the laser procedure, the angle has opened up and the iris falls backwards and the angle is now much less acute. What may you experience if you have glaucoma? So glaucoma is a very, very gradual progression and a progressive disease and visual loss is usually found in the periphery. So as you can see, in a normal patient on the top left hand corner, the image is clear. On the second image at the top right hand corner, you will see that there is some loss of vision in the right side of the image inferiorly at the bottom. So this is in early stages of glaucoma where the patient may not even notice when both eyes are opened whether there are any visual whether, whether there's any visual impairment. In advanced stages of glaucoma, the peripheral vision is lost. So even though you can still see the car in the center clearly, the side vision actually ends up being blurred. What does an ophthalmologist do if you have glaucoma? When you come to the clinic, we will perform an examination of your eyes in front of the slit lamp. We will also check your intraocular pressures via tonometry, which is the Goldman Applination Tonometry with a blue light to examine for your actual intraocular pressures. And then we will also look at your nerve to see whether it is normal or whether there's any signs of glaucoma. In a normal patient, the cup to disc ratio is about 0 0.3. In a glaucoma patient, as seen in the bottom right corner, the nerve appears enlarged where the cup to disc ratio is actually more than 0 0.3. We will also let you undergo formal visual field testing, which will allow for us to see what you can actually see in your day-to-day -day life. This will come out as a printout as seen previously, and it, it, it is actually what we call a static automated parametry. So in the printout that we see, areas of white are areas that a patient can see. In a normal patient, this is the left eye, there is a normal blind spot, which is that little black spot on it. However, in glaucoma, other than that normal blind spot, there will be other areas of darkness, which are areas that the patient cannot see. And based on this, we can determine if the patient has either early, moderate, or advanced loss due to the glaucoma. And we will also be able to check for progression. Other than that, we will do also a scan of the nerve, optic nerve of your eye, which is known as the OCT-RNFL. 
This allows us to quantitatively determine the thickness of your optic nerve as well as the central corneal thickness. So what should you expect when you see an ophthalmologist? In the glaucoma clinic, we will initially ask you some questions about risk factors, whether you have any family history of glaucoma, what are your other medical conditions. We will examine your eyes as previously mentioned. We will check your anterior segment. We will check your intraocular pressure and we will also look at your optic nerve. Subsequently, we will send you for a test, either a visual field test, a central corneal thickness test, or a test that looks at the thickness of your optic nerve. After you come back from the tests, we will look at your results, interpret it, and then explain to you as to whether you have glaucoma and whether you need further treatment. In terms of controlling your glaucoma, the aim of all glaucoma treatment is to lower the pressure within the eye. We do this via the use of eye drops. So in, the, in, 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 our, in, our, in SNE scene, we have various eye drops that we can use to treat glaucoma. These can be either in the form of um, eye drops that contain only one medication, or they can be combination drops that we can use as well, which will allow for um, a more convenient application for the patients. These eye drops are effective, however, they will need much compliance from the patients and you may be asked to put your eye drops either once at night, twice a day or three times a day. We can also offer patients laser to either improve the fluid outflow or reduce fluid production. As mentioned previously, in the acute angle closure glaucoma, we do a laser peripheral iridotomy at the iris to reduce the intraocular pressure. We can also perform what we call a transscleral, transscleral cyclophotocoagulation in which we use a laser to burn the ciliary body to, pre to reduce the amount of fluid that is produced by the eye and this will subsequently as well reduce the eye pressure. Alternatively, in patients who do not respond well to either the eye drops or, uh, or, or laser, we offer the patient surgery. And surgery can be in the form of either a traditional glaucoma surgery or in, in based on current newer, newer uh, technology, we can offer the patient minimally invasive glaucoma surgery as well. In traditional glaucoma surgery, it is in the form of either a trabeculectomy or a tube shunt surgery. So in a trabeculectomy, we are actually making a scleral flap within the sclera itself and this is a little trapdoor that allows for fluid to flow out of the eye underneath the conjunctiva through an alternative pathway other than the trabecular meshwork. This will allow for reduced intraocular pressures and hopefully it will control the glaucoma as well as to preserve whatever vision that is left. In a tube shunt surgery, we place a device which is a tube that is connected to a plate. This artificial tube will rest in the anterior segment of the eye and the plate will rest underneath the eyelid, underneath the conjunctiva. And this will again allow for an alternative passage of flow of fluid out of the eye to reduce the intraocular pressure. Of course, what is important to note is that in the treatment of glaucoma, all these interventions do not improve vision. So the aim of glaucoma treatment is to reduce the eye pressure so as to preserve whatever vision that is left. In the recent few years, we have come up with new technologies to put in very, very small implants within the eye to increase outflow as well. This is in the form of a minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. As you can see, this slide shows the picture of a hydrous implant that allows for fluid to flow out through the stenting of the trabecular meshwork. And the other minimally invasive glaucoma surgery that we perform here as well is the presence of an eye stent. So placing these eye stents within the eye itself, it allows for fluid to flow out through the trabecular meshwork and it will reduce your intraocular pressure within the eye itself as well. So in terms of treatment for glaucoma, different types of glaucoma and different stages of glaucoma will require different types of treatment. The treatment, as mentioned, may or may not be applicable to you and you will require um, an ophthalmologist to review your, your symptoms as well as signs uh, before prescribing the actual treatment. 
Within Singapore National Eye Centre, we have the entire suite of treatment options available should you require them. And your ophthalmologist will then advise you on the best options after a review of your condition. Eye drops are generally the first line for treatment. And if prescribed, it is very important to use them as instructed to prevent further damage. All in all, glaucoma is a chronic disease that requires long-term follow-up. So if you have been prescribed eye drops for your glaucoma, you will need to, you will need to use them every day. And you will need to come for frequent follow-up because only at an ophthalmologist will you be able to get your eye pressure reviewed. And you will be able to perform the Humphrey Visual Field Test as well as the Nerve Fiber Layer Tests which will allow for us to quantify the amount of damage and progression from glaucoma over time. Thank you very much. Now we will go on to the Q&A section. Um, I think there are quite a lot of patients who have asked some questions. Let me just scroll down from the list. Okay, so Sam has asked, I have glaucoma in my right eye and my vision is only 10% left. Is this condition suitable for surgery and, a, and any benefit? Can surgery enhance vision or worse? Like I mentioned to you, glaucoma surgery, um, glaucoma treatment in general is basically to prevent further loss of vision and to preserve whatever vision that is left. If only 10% of your vision is left, um, surgery will not improve the vision. However, um, depending on the situation and you will need a review from an ophthalmologist because every situation is different, the surgery may or may not help in your case. All right, because uh, it's quite specific in the question that you ask. I think that it is better that you discuss this with the ophthalmologist and from there we can tell you as to whether surgery is uh, an option for you. Okay. Dr. Fu, after cataract op, your, my glaucoma pressure increased and spread. Now I need to use eye drops. So um, sometimes after cataract surgery, um, due to either the steroid response or due to pseudophagic glaucoma itself, glaucoma can actually worsen and you will need um, an increase in the number of eye drops to be used because only then will we be able to control the pressure. So more importantly, um, even if you have to use two eye drops, you will need to continue to follow up frequently with the ophthalmologist. So someone asked whether stroke can cause glaucoma. Stroke and glaucoma are generally not related. Uh, stroke is due to something within the brain itself. Uh, glaucoma is more of an eye pressure issue. Although stroke can cause visual field defects, which may appear similar to glaucoma. So someone asked, understand glaucoma may be inherited. If our pa parents has glaucoma, what preventive and de de uh, detective measures should we take? So usually we would suggest that um, you come regularly for eye screening just to see whether you have glaucoma, especially for patients age 50 and above. So you can get a referral from a polyclinic and tell the doctor at the polyclinic that um, you know your parents have glaucoma and you would like to be screened for glaucoma. Alternatively, we have um, eye screenings done, um, but because of the COVID now, we cannot do it in person. Uh, usually, if we have eye screenings, uh, you can also go for those eye screenings. And if you have high risk of glaucoma, they'll refer you for an ophthalmologist review. Okay, someone asked, will the steroid eye drop prescribed for uh, post-cataract surgery cause a spike in eye pressure and if not controlled result in glaucoma? So steroid eye drops and steroid oral treatment, if used for a long period, can cause glaucoma. However, usually the ones prescribed after cataract surgery um, will not cause um, a, a major spike in the eye pressure. So um, if you do come for a follow-up after your cataract operation, we will still check your eye pressure and we will let you know. But generally, these eye drops that are used after cataract surgery are generally very, very safe. I think um, we've come to the end of the Q&A session. Uh, 
I will now hand the time over to Krina, who will, go, uh, who will tell us about the next part of the program.